when I hear people, you know, I'm so OCD about this, that, or the other thing. What, I'm listening to people and I'm finding, indeed, many, many, I'd say most people with a functioning cortex have unwanted thoughts and occasionally engage in repetitive behavior. So you go back and check your door to make sure you're locked it, or you go back to make, check your car. So, so that's ubiquitous. I think most people are having that. But where it crosses over from being what all of us occasionally deal with, of fears or repetitive behaviors that are connected to these fears or discomfort, is where it starts to lead to functional impairment. So the, I, a really good example came up yesterday. We're talking about a kid who, and it was a question I got, well, so if a four-year-old is lining up rocks and making them just so, like that in and of itself sounds like what a four-year-old should be doing. That sounds like fun, and it sounds like, they, and they're very particular about the way they line them up sometimes, or their Hot Wheels, or whatever the case may be. But where it starts to become problematic is where the kid now can't go to bed, where the kid is now worried sitting in bed if someone's going to touch the Hot Wheels, if someone's going to move them. And then it starts to lead to the repetitive questioning and the, and the functional impairment, where now I've got a kid who doesn't want to go to their baseball game because they're afraid their stuff might get messed up. That looks to me more like not your typical run-of-the-mill um, sort of mild obsession. That sounds like um, it's associated with functional impairment. When I start to see that level of intensity, I'm also looking across at frequency. So if this is coming up more frequently, it's not just the Hot Wheels now, it's this, it's that, it's everything, is where I start to look and ask myself, are we now, have we now crossed over into a diagnosable condition? I think people are sometimes so worried to admit it or saying, I don't, you know, it's, it's, I have this problem, I don't know what to do about it. And then they come to people like us and, and we're, we know exactly what to do about it. We've known for 50 years what to do about it. And so let us try to help you learn what to do, what to do about your obsessions and maybe even more importantly, what not to do. Because if you're trying to shove thoughts out of your head, and the more you shove them out the door, the more they're going to come in the window. So we've got to teach you to be more tolerant of unwanted thoughts and emotions so you don't get on that treadmill and then you get stuck. I want to get the kid to join me. I'm not going to fight with the kid. I'm going to say, let's, let's make OCD the villain. And let's say, well, OCD has been filling you up with these messages. And I think OCD is trying to scare you into doing its bidding because OCD is a parasite and it wishes to feed. Parasites wish to feed, and it eats compulsion. So if you have obsessions, and then you do compulsions to get rid of them, your parasite's gonna get bigger. That tapeworm's growing, and you're gonna wind up having more trouble with that over time. So I want you to understand what you control and what you don't. So what you control is your, your compulsions, your responses to obsessions. You do not control obsessions. That's the key. I want you to lean into your fear, not away. And I want you to, to reduce and ultimately eliminate efforts you make to make yourself feel better in the moment. Those things need to go. Let's confront it. Let's find out how this works.